Okay. So that's the lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> never joke with the organizer of a festival that you want hard rock music walking onto a stage. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rami Ismail. I am the uh, business and developer guy at Vlambeer. Um, and uh, I'm Jens Berenstein. I'm known as uh, Jeb. I'm the lead creative designer at Mojang and have been uh, the lead designer for Minecraft for five years. And somehow my title got introduced as a third person. So I guess BizDev guy is also on stage, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where he went. I'm sorry. Um, so let's talk about you. Um, let's talk about how you got started in this industry. Has games programming always been your thing? Yes. Um, I've uh, I've always been like really interested in game design and making games like all the time. It's it's like it was the only thing I ever wanted to do all the time, uh, but uh, I wasn't really sure where, how to get into the industry, or, or essentially it was not much of an industry, so I, I just started studying um, like programming courses, essentially, and I thought it was extremely boring. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you start? When was that? Like, uh, when, how old were you when you started programming for the first time? Well, I, I, I started programming when I was 11, I think. 11. Yeah, uh, because um, um, a friend, my father, s essentially just told me, like, well, to make make games, you need to learn to program, and uh, and I was I was like, okay, I'll, I'll see sure. see see what I can do, and and uh, he told me that uh, well, basic is a way to start, and uh, the the first. Uh, version of basic was I think it was called systems basic mm. it was uh, one of those where you, you could you have to uh, like you have to write everything uh, in one one go and then we wanted to change something you would have to enter like which line do you want to insert and edit in and uh, I was essentially too too young to understand yeah. what what was going on uh, but then uh, uh, I dis discovered QBasic which was uh, extremely much yeah. Easier and that's that's where I started. Oh, I started with QBasic, yeah, yeah, because they had that demo called Gorillas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They would throw bananas, yeah, and they would explode. Yeah, that and uh, I it, thought that was awesome. Yeah, it also had uh, this demo called Nibbles, which was essentially snake, snake. Yeah, yeah. snake. and that's uh, how I, I you w I would say that I started learning programming by modding, because uh, why well, I took that demo and uh, add added well added new levels and uh, also. Added so you could play three players on, on one keyboard and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I think I changed the main menu to say my name, oh. but I was <laughs> six at the time, so I, I had no idea what I was doing. So so you started modding Nibbles, yeah. um, and then from there on out, you you grew thre like to program more. Uh, but modding never really left you, did you? No, uh, I I always loved the games, which allowed you to change them, like. I, I made a lot of levels for Doom, uh, and levels and mods for Quake, and uh, I, in the, in the the, the real-time strategy game Doom 2, mm -hmm. I discovered that you could change the scenario pack files uh, if by, in an editor, yeah. and and I started modding my my missions that way as well. Uh, I also. Um, I, I also did a lot of uh, um, like game design on pen and paper uh, games. Like I, I loved making my own board games and my mm -hmm. own role-playing game rules. Uh, and uh, even even today, I can sometimes just you know like oh you. It, it's a long time now, but I I, I I I sometimes I would buy a game only to read the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I never actually played it. I was just interested just in, in the manual. Yeah, yeah. It's I miss it. manuals. Yeah. No, but, but, but no, but for for board games as yeah. well. Yeah. But so, I also I also kind of miss manuals just in yeah. general. Yeah. Just to see how they solved the problems mm -hmm. and uh, and how it worked. Um, and then from there you 
started to find a career in the games industry. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it, I jumped on and off, so, so to speak, because as, as I mentioned, like I started studying uh, programming in the university, and I jumped. Uh, uh, I would say I jumped off. Uh, I quit school you early. Dropped yeah, I dropped out. Dropped out. And uh, uh, well, jumped off school. So oh, yeah, it sounds kind of cool, but it's <laughs> kind of imagine like a big explosion and like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Cool. But uh, I I managed to get a job at um, a game development company in Stockholm. Uh, so I worked a little bit on uh, uh, on a, a game called uh, Dino, which never was released. But it was supposed to be like an adventure. No, not adventure. More like a puzzle strategy game, mm. where you were uh, 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 trying to get a, a, a group of dinosaurs through through hazards, essentially. But it, it never saw the day of light. And mm. uh, the company I worked for um, uh, had a money problem, so they started renting out the, us, uh, the developers, to other companies. Yeah. Uh, so I actually did, did a little work for Starbreeze. Um, the Swedish company that is known for the Riddick games and uh, and um, uh, Payday. Yeah. But this is um, 2002, was this? So this yeah. is before that. So um, you, found, you found your way into the industry. Um, yeah. You, you didn't grow up in Stockholm, you grew up in a village elsewhere. So you have to move to Stockholm? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. But I mean, in Sweden, all, all cities are quite small, so I don't seem out of blue as a, as a village. But yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the games industry in, in uh, Sweden, could you, could you talk a bit about how it's spread, where, where you can find the main the Yeah, main the, 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 almost all the big companies are in, in Stockholm. <clears throat> and they're almost all located on, uh, on the southern part of, of Stockholm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it, that's like the hot zone for the Swedish game development. So if you want to go into the games industry, you all roads lead to Stockholm. Uh, yeah, but but thanks to the schools, there are now cities where there are many like indie startups uh, because we we have schools spread all over Sweden. Um, it's it's partly because uh, the universities uh, get paid uh, based on the number of students they have, so they try to create create courses that attract students. And uh, game development is uh, you know, it's very popular. Yeah, we'll get back to that uh, to Sweden as a as a place later. Um, but you moved you moved to Stockholm. You were in the games industry now, and then you did odd jobs. You worked for different companies um, for yeah, eight years, nine years. No, <laughs> what happened was that uh, the company went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I, I then decided, well, okay, I need a broader. I, I, what I learned was that I needed a better understanding of, of mathematics, essentially. So I wanted to study again. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. I, so I, I actually started studying again for uh, like computer science, like a, a master's degree. Uh, and in meanwhile, I also started my own company together with a couple of friends, uh, Oxai Game Studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started trying to make games and sell them as like sell them as shareware, it's yeah. essentially. Um, and uh, and when I finished my studies, uh, I got a job at a company called Planito, which was making a, a quiz game for Facebook. So they were mm -hmm. essentially like writing the Facebook yeah. game. Uh, this must have been in 2008-ish? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, and then in 2009, uh, 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 Minecraft started, uh, well, Marcus created Minecraft. Yeah. And one year later, <laughs> he formed Mojang and hired, uh, hired uh, Daniel Kaplan. Yeah. Uh, as the like uh, bis business, business guy, yeah. the third guy on this panel. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I knew Daniel Kaplan from uh, game jams, like well, essentially like Game Lab, and uh, it's mm. specifically No More Sweden, yeah. which is a, a game jam in Sweden. Uh, 
and also because Daniel Kaplan had his own company, just like I had Oxai, he had uh, Ludosity with a yeah. couple of friends. Uh, so when he started working f f with Marcus on Mojang, and they were starting to uh, figure out how to m make a new game called Scrolls, uh, uh, well, they needed people. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dana then asked me if I knew someone. And I say, oh, well, I knew yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> me, I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I can probably maybe do this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and it, then it was just lucky for me that because since they were making, wanted to make scrolls, it, which was supposed to be like an online card trading game, which required a, a lot of server programming, yeah. backend programming. And Tanito was a company with a lot of server backend programming. Uh, they, um, they thought I was a good fit. So yeah. I, I got the job as a scrolls developer. Yeah. So so did you did you at that point did you give up Oxi or how did that did you keep Oxi? No, that that was one of my uh, requirements for taking the job that I was allowed to keep Oxi on side. Nice. Uh, because we were already back then working on on Cobalt. Yeah. Since, since like a, a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah, I remember you showing me a first prototype for that in 2011, maybe, at GDC? Or uh, yeah, we were at GDC with yeah. Cobalt in 2000. And, uh, yeah. I think, we, I think I played a very early version of it back then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a long project. Uh, but you got kind of busy when you got to Mojang. Yeah. Uh, well, first I discovered that scrolls didn't. Well, there was nothing to do on scrolls because no one knew what the game was about. And you got hired to work on a project. And then, uh, yeah, it was it was an idea in in, in uh, someone's head essentially. Yeah. And uh, and at the same time, uh, Marcus was very busy with uh, Minecraft because uh, at that time he wanted to go from the alpha stage to the beta stage, and uh, there was uh, like Christmas and uh, holidays yeah. and. Uh, problems with the website and like uh, uh, everything was on fire. Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. So I started helping out with that, and then I asked uh, simply um, if I could help out with the Minecraft code and do some changes. Yeah. Uh, Is that a polite way of saying it needed to be better, or did you just want to make some changes? No, it was just that I I, I was interested. Yeah, <laughs> it was not it was like. I, if he if had said no, I would be fine. I, would, I think I would have thought that would be strange, but at the same time, I'd, it like was not like... Whatever, yeah. let's just try. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the, the absolutely first thing I did was to add the add item tool tips, uh, so which actually says which item you're hovering, uh, uh. because we, did, we didn't have that before. Um, and uh, that's also when I learned that uh, the Minecraft community don't like changes. <laughs> 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 like the first feedback I, I got was that, can you add an option to turn the item to tips off? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what happened was also that uh, uh, since I had, to move, I had to move back to Stockholm because I moved out uh, to study, I moved back to Stockholm and Stockholm has a really, really bad housing uh, problem. problem. Yeah. Uh, so I was living in a house where, like, I was essentially guarding the house for the family while they were away. Like, <laughs> just, you know, like, um, show, uh, cleaning up the driveway from snow and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and making sure that everything's yeah. fine. So I, I stayed in Stockholm when everybody else went on Christmas vacation. So I had a couple of weeks in the office all by myself, and I started adding stuff to Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then when everybody came back, I was like, oh, look at what I have done. Yeah. So, I, so I, I, I demoed everything, uh, and thankfully for me, uh, Marcus liked it, <laughs> uh, because it could just uh, may as well have been like yeah. a disaster. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it essentially meant that uh, they had hired a new guy to work on scrolls, and I continued on Minecraft. You yeah. became the one of the Minecraft, like the Minecraft person. Well, yeah, for that year it was just me and Notch working on Minecraft. Yeah. Um, and uh, then uh, for at Minecon uh, at the end of that year, he, he wanted to do something else. So I was the only developer left on my so, Minecraft. So if you, 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 you get Minecraft back in 2011, um, it's your Christmas holiday, and you decide to add, what do you add to Minecraft at that point? 
Because at that point it was a hit, kind of, and you yeah. had your yeah. first, you had your first run in with the Minecraft community. Yeah. And you got to meet them by them saying, "Please undo what you did." <laughs> um, and then you go like, "Okay, let's add some more." What did you add? What was uh, the thing? It was not uh, like I, w I, I, I had a lot. Uh, a lot to choose from, really, because uh, Mar M M Marcus had m m made before. Uh, well, the first version of Minecraft is now called um, well, what's called Minecraft Classic. Mm. Everything it was very, like only creative mode and uh, very very small worlds. Yeah. And uh, now uh, we had the survival with infinite worlds, yeah. and <coughs> there were a lot of blocks missing from Classic that hadn't appeared in Survival yet. So the first thing I looked at was to how to get back the colored wool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, in, the, in, in the survival only had the white wool. Uh, so I, I added the dyes uh, yeah. for uh, dyeing in the wool. And uh, I always, every feature, uh, I, I, I don't like repeating in myself in a sense. So. Uh, for the dice, like uh, a number of them are just, they uh, well, were just uh, mixtures of the other dice. But mm -hmm. uh, the ones that you found were uh, were black, white, blue, yellow, and red. Yes. 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 <laughs> I'm just making sure that I don't forget yeah. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yellow and red, they were both from uh, from from the flowers. Mm -hmm. And blue, I decided to make uh, an ore, the lapis lap lazuli. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I then uh, and then the white is from bone, so it's a drop from the mob monsters. Uh, and then for the for the black, uh, uh, I decided to uh, add the squids. Yeah. Um, so you were you were always solving problems to reach this one goal, right? It's yeah, like yeah, we don't exactly. Have, we don't have a thing that would be black. Yeah. As a die, so yeah. let's add squids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that kind of thing. It's yeah. yeah. I, re I reckon it, like very often when there's something broken in our games, we just go like, oh, if we add fire, then it's all fine. Yeah, and it's very <laughs> and explosions <laughs> for some reason that always happens with us. Yeah. Uh, um. So okay, you started to get more responsibility on Minecraft uh, at that point. Um, yeah. And that was 2011. Yeah. And then from there, um, you kept working on it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But at some point, Marcus didn't continue working on it. Yeah, that was at, at Minecon, our Minecraft conference in uh, Las Vegas yeah. in 2011. So uh, that's when he uh, he stepped down from Minecraft, and uh, and I took over as the I, my title from then was lead developer of Minecraft, but I was the only developer of Minecraft as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's always fun to put a lead in front of something if you're the only one. I'm actually the lead biz dev guy at Flounder. Um, but yeah, so, and then you took over. That yeah. must have been a very strange moment, I guess. Yeah, uh, it, it, yeah it, was a, it was a bit strange. Um, unfortunately, Minecon didn't go so well, so like, we had a little bit of uh, turmoil, like there was some, some community drama. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a little bit sad to like, start that year with uh, like, yeah, putting out the fires yeah. <laughs> yeah. again. Uh, and then for a while I was just poking around on my own, but uh, we, we obviously we knew we needed to add more people to the project. Yeah. Uh, and uh, eventually, we 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 were in talks with a, a community project called um, a Bucket mm -hmm. with our developers. Yeah. Uh, to bring them in and uh, and uh, help us. Uh, they, there were two two problems essentially that I couldn't do my on my own. Like um, the Minecraft server, uh, like the application for the server. Had performance issues, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the bucket had created like a parallel server uh, with better performance. Yeah. Uh, bucket also had a modding API, like you could add mods to it. So that was two things that we wanted to do, and uh, so we essentially talked with them, and we wanted to hire them to do the same thing for mm -hmm. the for the actually real product. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, it, Eventually, they they started working for for Mojang. Uh, two of them uh, uh, didn't want uh, didn't want to move to Sweden, mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, to well to move to Stockholm. Yeah, it's a pretty nice place to move to. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're in charge, um, and um, now you've got this project which is loved by. I don't even know what type of number I should say at this point. Is it like millions? Is it just like Earth? Is it like how many planets? I don't solar systems. I don't know which number to use. Um, you get put in charge of that project. Yeah. Are you scared or excited or just excited to work? Or do you just ignore all of that and work? Like it, somewhere in the middle, I would assume. Yeah, it's it's a little bit weird because uh, I like I can also read in the paper. Oh, Minecraft's really big. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. it, yeah, it, it, it's it's like I, I still just go to work and work on on like my game or yeah. like not it's not really my game, but I, may, I mean I, I essentially I do add when I make changes to the game, I do it for for myself mm -hmm. and my, I'm. <laughs> I try to have myself as the target audience. Yeah, it's easier easier that way. Yeah, but of of course I'm like sometimes uh, when I go to Reddit and and you can see like okay Reddit ha has a bad Jeb day, yeah. <laughs> you know like yeah. oh okay I okay I did something something wrong yeah. and. Uh, uh, well, what kind of things do you do? Wrong? Like, what are like strange or interesting community requests that you see? Because I'm gonna like for Nuclear Throne, I come across the most ridiculous stuff. Like, yeah. I read, I read the, I read Reddit and then Twitter, and then I go like, "This is the worst idea I've ever read," <laughs> and I'm not gonna put that into my game. And every uh, now and then, you come across an idea where you just go like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What, do Do you have anything like that where you're just like, "This is weird," but also, oh. Uh, I should probably start taking notes when when that <laughs> happens because it, 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 it's new stuff all the time, so you forget where, where it originally came from. Yeah. But obviously, I get a, a lot of really bad ideas, uh, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, and, and definitely sometimes there are great great ideas as well. Um, um, but. It, one one thing regarding like the community feedback. One thing I do remember that I needed to change after people gave feedback was uh, the the Ender chest. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's the chest where you you put things into it and it kind of exists in the in its in its own dimension. So even if you remove the chest and put it somewhere else, uh, your items are still there. Yeah. And it's always if you put two Ender chests, it's the same items in both all the time. Um, because when I made that, my, my plan for it was that uh, I envisioned that you would have one ender chest in the basement, would fill it with stuff, and then one ender chest up here that another player would empty, yeah. like a transportation system. Yeah, mailbox. Yeah. Uh, so it was essentially just one of these dimensional chests for the whole world, mm -hmm. and everybody could access it. Uh, but the problem was that it doesn't scale. Like, if, if you're, it works fine for a group of friends, yeah. But if you, if it's uh, like, like 15 or more, more players, it will just be anarchy in yeah. that, and uh, essentially <coughs> useless for everyone. It's like sort of Hunger Games, as a, as an object. This is like now we just fight over what's in the chest. That's yeah. kind of yeah. cool, actually. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but uh, uh, so uh, well, I just need I just changed it so it's your personal dimension. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, like in the uh, modern community, uh, people made chests that uh, had like a lock combination, so you could actually it worked like kind of like both ways. Yeah. But, but you had uh, you had three. I think they used three colors, which is 16 into the power of three. Yeah. Um, it's pretty secure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's pretty secure. Uh, but but uh, and then you can like argue why. Uh, why haven't I added that also? Yeah. And 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 I'm I'm I really don't like when you make too complicated mm -hmm. trinkets. Yeah. That, that's essentially it. It's it's the same like when I when I made the the die redstone diode the repeater object. Mm -hmm. You can set the, the delays on it. 
Yeah. And I tried to be clever and had a one, two, three, and seven, like for the delay steps. <laughs> Or was it one, two, five, seven, maybe? Because I, I figured that would be like the least amount of dials to create the most amount of combinations. Yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, the community corrected me and said they, they actually, you should actually have one, one, two, five, and six, or something like that. But anyway, uh, and then in the end, I just, ah, uh, Fuck it! Yeah. I'll just use one, two, three, four, <laughs> because and that was the solution. yeah. Because you already need well, you already need to look too much on the wiki <laughs> to, to understand the game. So when when I don't need to make it more complicated, complicated then, keep then, it yeah. simple. Yeah, exactly. Because um, a huge part of, of the community of Minecraft is um, young or right? yeah. kids. Yeah. Um, is you said like I design with myself as a target audience. Yeah. Are you a kid? <laughs> By heart, or <laughs> apparently, well, apparently, kids are like me then. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, I don't think I'm a kid. No, oh. <laughs> because a lot of the tools you ended up creating for them, they've they've embraced in the long run. Always, like like you said, the Minecraft community doesn't like change. I don't think yeah. any community likes change because their community around yeah. this thing that they like. Yeah. Um, but if you look at a lot of the things you added, they've been they found like good use in the community. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there are there some um, are there some things you look at and you go like I'm so happy that got accepted by the community, or are there things you're really sad about where you're like I wish that you know got some steam. Um, I I guess I'm I'm really satisfied when it like kind of pieces my ego. <laughs> so That's nice. so when I make when I make a bunch of new blocks with new textures and, and people post screenshots, oh look what I built with this new block it looks amazing. I don't know that makes me happy. Make happy. Yeah. 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 Uh, when it comes to like more like oh wow I didn't know you could actually do that. Uh, it's weird it, it doesn't like it's it, it's amazing but but it, it doesn't feel the same because uh, that's uh, that's um, not. I can't take credit for yeah, that. Yeah, it's intentional. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's li like it's it's there. Uh, it's the the creator's um, achievement. It's not yeah. mine. It's just uh, like a like a side effect essentially yeah. that they, that they discovered. Um, because yeah. the community builds a lot of stuff. You yeah. have a huge modding community as well. Uh, people are making. Amazing yeah. things. Are, yeah. are there any things that you played where you looked at it and you went like, "This is amazing"? Like, please, please do something with this. Or, yeah, I, I, again, I, I, uh, some people think that I'm a little bit too conservative or too modest. Uh, no, like uh, not modest, but what's the word? Mellow. Or so, well, no, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the sense that, well, uh, I I try to like if if this is the is the sphere of features yeah. in Minecraft, I try to build it this way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, many mods they build it like a new like little, the, little the, sphere. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. They like they are like satellites. Like they like take oh the redstone part. I love yeah. that, and they just bam lots of redstone, yeah. and they or they love the animals and bam more creatures mod like like adds 100 e animals. Didn't you once tell me there was a point where people asked you to remove a certain animal from the game? Um, was that a thing? It's possibly possible. I think I remember that. I think because I'm Muslim, we don't oh, need, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't okay, need okay. pigs. Yeah, and I think you once got a request to remove well, pigs. Yeah, from it, it, does, it ha happens. Uh, from time to time, yes. That happens frequently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, here's what you should change about Minecraft. Remove pigs. Yeah, that's exactly. A, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and, well, essentially, the, the reasoning uh, is different, but uh, sometimes it's just that like, my parents won't allow me to play Minecraft. Can you please remove Aww. pigs? Aww. You, <laughs> you should have an option for pigs. Uh, <laughs> turn off the pigs. Do you, is there very often because, like you mentioned early on, tooltips people wanted an option. Was is your core philosophy for for Minecraft? Is it to be as many things for as many people as possible, or do you have like a very specific 
Like because I think a lot of a lot of times I see the solution of like add an option for it. Mm, yeah. Do you I, believe I, in I, that? No, I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too. That's if, why I'm asking. But. Yeah. Uh, I I I want to remove options if possible. Just delete options. Yeah. Even even. Um, to say they were stuck to the pigs. <laughs> and you remove the pigs and now the options are gone. Doesn't work. No. 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 But the. Even, even uh, uh, I'm not, a f I'm not even a fan of performance options, uh, like uh, even though I know they are uh, sometimes needed. Yeah. But, but even on like on on uh, the pocket edition, we discovered that uh, uh, we have a lot of options uh, mm -hmm. before because phones are different. Yeah. Uh, but we discovered that. Uh, our, our audience, which are young people, they just go to the options and are on, 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 <laughs> on, on. <laughs> they just turn on everything. Yeah. And, I, and I guess that's fine as well. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, um, I remember in Nuclear Throne there was this very interesting moment where we had an option menu and one of the options was better shadows. And we never hooked that up to anything. <laughs> but people were really upset when we took that out because now their better shadows were gone. And we were like... <laughs> That, yeah, sure, <laughs> we'll put it back. Um, we put it back for a while and then we took it out again. And then <laughs> it was fine, but uh, options are a very odd thing, I guess. Like, people really want them and then they don't. Yeah, it's a, uh, we, we're talking about this, uh, the console edition recently got a mini game, uh, like a, the battle arena, inspired mm -hmm. by the hung Hunger Game mod. mod. Yeah. yeah. And in that we had uh, a lot of options. Uh, originally, mm -hmm. and and we just argue that if we don't know as designers what what is the option, mm -hmm. like uh, how should the players like, figure that fi out? Figure that out. Yeah. Um, so we kept some options that we thought made sense, mm -hmm. and then we if we essentially thought let's wait for feedback and like, then see what happens. Yeah, yeah, and see if people actually request it if they want want all, all of these settings. So did they? Did they request more uh, options? It's too soon to say. Okay, we, you we, we just released it last week. Last so. week? Yeah, that's yeah. like, when was that? Last, last Monday. L yeah. yeah, that's pretty fast. Although you would imagine if Minecraft releases something that the feedback is immediate, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it's not. When you get feedback, I do you let it simmer for a bit? Like, walk away from it and then look again in like a week? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Sometimes I, I do that, but I'm, I mainly get feedback from uh, uh, people who play the Java version because th those are the people that are active on Reddit, and Reddit mm -hmm. is for me the easiest way to read feedback yep. because then you see, like, then it's not only uh, directed towards me because other people can comment on the on the feedback, so you get a more n nuanced. Yeah, uh, it's not like Twitter where you see the tweet. And it's no, like you, and then it's done. Yeah, exactly. Like Reddit as a conversation, yeah. more so. We we obviously also get a lot of feedback from the Pocket Edition players, but uh, the Pocket Edition players, they are just, uh, I mean, they they seem more crazy. <laughs> 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 they just want, since the Pocket Edition hasn't caught up with uh, all the features of the Java version yet, they just want more and more and more and more. So, yeah. Yeah, so like the day after we release uh, the recent update of 015, they just ask when it's 016. Like, yeah. Like, come on, guys. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have the same thing. If we, when we re release update 98 for Nuclear Throne, the first threat that gets made in the forum is update 99. Yeah. And we're like, aw, <laughs> we just celebrate 98 with us, please? Yeah. Um, so eventually, um, as the story goes, uh, Minecraft gets bought. Um, did anything change for you at that point? Like, um, because it got bought by um, Microsoft. Yes, in um, 2014. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did anything change for you? Because Mojang at that point was a relatively large studio. I think how many people worked for you at that point? Uh, we were uh, 35. 35, I think. Yeah. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Now there's Microsoft. Yes. Uh, well, in the beginning, it was a lot of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Like we just what, paid what two and a half billion for this. What did we buy? Like, mm, what? No, yeah, no. Like a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah, but also, I mean, for us, it was a lot of like, how how will we work with yeah. this? And uh, uh, and um, uh, it it also became clear that uh, like we 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 have uh, two two main teams. One working on the Pocket Edition and one working on the Java Edition. Mm -hmm. And the Java Edition has been like the 
the focal. The fo yeah, the focus and uh, also the like the reference implementation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but we already knew that the, that the Pocket Edition was actually selling better, like when the Java Edition. Yeah. If you could just count numbers, so yeah. So it w it was actually the bigger platform, uh, and it was also. Um, uh, clear that Microsoft wanted a Windows 10 store edition, mm -hmm. which uh, we, we would not be able to put the Java version on. Of course, yeah, because uh, the, now <laughs> the platform is suddenly Ex a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so for a while, uh, when when we kind of got used to that idea, there was a lot of like um, upset feelings, mm -hmm. um, uh, and. Uh, uh, Eventually, it. I, I think I think we are in a in a very good spot now. But for me personally, it meant that both the team got a lot bigger, mm -hmm. uh, and we got the like the Bellevue team. Yeah. And uh, and so my my role as the lead developer on Minecraft didn't feel right anymore. Yeah. Especially because it, when it became so so much about uh, handling staff. Yeah, questions. because at that point yeah. you're also like you're you're the team lead, so now you're yeah. also the manager or the, the yeah. HR or yeah. the you know like. <coughs> so we've uh, we've reorganized it. So essentially, uh, Daniel Kaplan is the team lead now mm -hmm. for Minecraft for all Minecraft platforms. Oh. Uh, and uh, I am, as I mentioned, my title now is lead creative designer, but I work 100% on Minecraft. So yeah. I don't do anything else at the moment. Lead creative designer, though. Yeah. So, so designer. Yeah. Uh, so I work. Uh, my my role is that I'm the I I have the final say on everything that happens in the game. Mm -hmm. Like once you once you start playing a world, yeah. Th after that, I decide. <laughs> yeah. Um, has that been has that has that posed any interesting challenges? Because now you work with three teams, as you said, and I guess there's more editions of the game. Yeah. I think uh, a challenge is mainly uh, it's a, you know it's uh, as always it's about communication and also l it's a little bit up to me because I really like like sitting and working on the game mm -hmm. uh, but everybody in the team both both in Stockholm and in Bellevue have ideas for the game mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it kind of I don't want to be a bottleneck for for creating uh, yeah. adding new stuff so it's very like. Yeah. It's like the you go away for Christmas holiday and they come back and there's one guy <laughs> who worked all of the holiday to add some stuff to Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. So they like have that. to go like yes or no. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Does that happen? <laughs> uh, it, it has happened in the past. Then I got really upset. <laughs> but but uh, I, I, I calmed down and now, now like... <laughs> I, I realized. Well, I, I realized also. Like, or I, I can't. I can't get upset when someone does something yeah. they like. Uh, but uh, so it, it's. M I'm. I'm much more comfortable with yeah. pe people poking around. Them. It's a role you have to grow into because this was never the role you you originally thought you would have, right? Like, no, no. So exactly. it's like, what were like the biggest lessons in like, if you had to say like one thing I learned during all of this this absolutely absurd Minecraft story where you're suddenly the creative designer on a game played in seven solar systems. Like, what is... What was uh, your takeaway? Uh, or are you still in too much in the middle of it to really say? <laughs> it's hard to, like, say... Uh, oops. Um... <laughs> What should I say? I know that everything you say is okay because you like that's <laughs> it's your lesson. It's yeah, your lesson yeah, is exactly. Like I need but, to, <laughs> but I'm I need sure, to like, eat better you, breakfast. Like, yeah, exactly. And tomorrow I'll be like, fuck! I should have said that. <laughs> I mean, that's Reddit. Just put it on Reddit. It's fine. <laughs> no, but I think I think the what uh, I the thing I've learned uh, while working on Minecraft is. Uh, how to uh, how to uh, essentially I got, get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. as I mentioned several times. Like, is, uh, that what I've learned is that um, people uh, who give feedback on your game 
they give it from their perspective, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's uh, what, I'm, well, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the fee feedback you get is never, never wrong. It's just they may not understand. Yeah. So I'm, I try to explain why, why I change things or why yeah. I designed it in a certain way because they don't like the feedback. Yeah. They, people who give feedback don't have all the information. Yeah. When people give when people give feedback, their feelings are always right. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But whether it's a good solution or not is completely yeah. separate from that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good lesson. Um, if people want to read your tweet tomorrow where they go like, shit, I should have said this instead, where should they go if they don't follow you? They should follow me. <laughs> where, where on Twitter? Uh, it's uh, Jeb and then underscore. J G, yeah. J E B underscore. Un underscore yeah. And then they can see what, what tomorrow's shit, I should have said this is. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Good. Um, we're going to open up the floor to questions because I think we have about 15 minutes left. Um, so if anybody has a question for Jens or Jeb or Jeb, Jeb is just your name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I ended up with THA at the front of my Twitter and it's the worst choice I ever made. Um, yeah, so if anybody has questions, I can't see anything because somebody put really bright lights above our heads, so I can't actually see anything. So I hope there's somebody with a microphone or something for questions, is there? I, yeah, there is. So if anybody has a question, just raise your hand. It's okay to ask questions, That's, it's super cool. He's not that scary. I might be, but... Um, so uh, you mentioned that uh, you had to deal with a lot of feedback. Uh, what do you do with, you know, the, the worst kind of feedback? <laughs> you know, the, the one that comes to you full of hate because they, as you said, they don't understand why you did a change to the game they love. Uh, and this, this is kind of like a tricky question, but... I, uh, I printed it and put it in a folder. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, have I should a, do that. I have a collection of. I, I've been bad at filling it, but uh, I, I have a collection of this really fun, angry <laughs> emails I get. But it's kind of like a to be considered folder or to be forgotten folder. <laughs> it's more like, oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I think I did that too, because there's like times where Twitter gets really angry at me, and then I have the script that just saves tweets. Yeah. But then it also calculates how much time people spent writing those tweets, and then I just look at that number and laugh. And that's <laughs> like, I guess it's a very, it's a very reassuring thing to, to make it a real thing, right? Yeah. Like a piece of paper and just be able to point at it and laugh. Yeah. It helps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, sometimes I, I get feedback uh, where, um, when they're very angry, and I, I try to explain uh, my point of view, and and you get into this, like, you get the traditional internet, I want to fight response. Like, mm. they just, they take your, each paragraph and counter each paragraph with more in, in like, uh, I really think I, I, if you want to write a book, that is uh, the best way of doing it. Just argue with somebody on the internet because the <laughs> texts get longer every yeah, yeah. time you respond. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, now it's, that, I guess that, I, I, I just don't, uh, and I reply to those, those things anymore. Like I just okay. I, uh, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't really help anyone. It, it is what it is, and like yeah. you can engage, but it doesn't help. Yeah, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, right. yeah. Cool. Um, there's a question in the middle there. Just don't throw the microphone. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Although I could hear you, but I don't think the mic is on. No? no? Just, just, just yell the question and we'll repeat it. Can you, can you talk about any of the, uh, the plans for Minecraft VR, or is that mostly Microsoft's 
Uh, I have um, a, I'm one of those guys that get really nauseous as soon as put on a VR <laughs> headset. Uh, but we have a, a developer in Stockholm, uh, uh, Tommaso Kecki, mm. uh, Italian, uh, who who really really loves uh, gizmos, and yeah. uh, he has been essentially leading the the project from our side. But most of the development has been done in uh, in um, uh, Seattle, in Bellevue. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, because uh, Oculus have also been helping out, and even John Carmack has been writing code for that's pretty cool for Minecraft. Yeah, and um, and yeah, the plan plan now is as they announced at E3 that uh, you, the like the pocket edition of the game or like the native uh, edition uh, is coming for the Oculus uh, Rift, and uh, I know they've uh, they've had to do a lot of development to make the like the user interface work and uh, how they did a lot of experimentation with jumping because you you, <laughs> you jump a lot in Minecraft. And they, th that also causes nausea, causes nausea. A little bit, yeah. Uh, so like they, t they try to make it so that, well, Tomasso made it so that if you walk towards a hill, you actually slide up instead of jump up. Uh, but eventually they threw that out and uh, we, like people, <laughs> essentially what they said, well, people would have to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe they, I, like, are, I mean. Are there any design decisions where you look back at now and you go like, oh crap, CR is gonna make throw people throw up besides the jumping on hills? I mean, minecarts sound like. A, uh, yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna buy it. Like, just first thing I do is build a roller coaster and just put my brother or in it and just be like, "This is gonna be fun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry." <laughs> like, oh, uh, 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 uh. Uh, yeah. I well, as I uh, as I was saying, I I haven't really followed it super yeah. closely. So, is this scary with you being the creative lead? Where you just go like, you know what, you guys just. Build the reference uh, build and figure it out. It, it would be scary if no one knew what what to do. It, but but uh, I I really trust uh, especially I trust Tommaso in in Stockholm yep. team because uh, I really trust his uh, uh, opinion and uh, he really wants it to be yep. be a good product. That's a good thing. Trust in your team is yeah. pretty yeah. pretty important. Any other questions? There's a question up here in the front. I'm sorry, you have to walk all the way down. It's silly. Next uh, time, do some questions in the middle, people. Like, so that <laughs> the people with the microphones don't have to walk all the way down. Just just oh. <laughs> Hello? Yep. Well, uh, regarding the huge amount of feedback, mm. uh, how do you organize and filter it? Do you have some kind of uh, methodologies or tools or whatever? I mean, to, to know about certain topic, if there is more or less feedback, or is if the people like or dislike that, so on. Um, again, I, I really like uh, the way Reddit works in, in that regard, because it essentially uh, Aggregates it, it the feedback for me uh, because uh, like t Twitter it's just rolls and rolls and rolls and the uh, same with e I get email uh, I don't really I don't really feel I have the time to read people's emails anymore uh, so that's why uh, that's why Reddit's good I guess a, f a, f a normal form would work as well uh, but, but the good thing is that I can go and look at the feedback when I want want to. Learn. I can find it, find out, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, we have uh, we also have a, a, a subreddit called the Minecraft suggest suggestions, uh, where people can give ideas for the game, and people may think that it works like they put an idea there and then we will we will uh, evaluate <laughs> it. That's not how it works. I go there when I'm having a like a bad day, like. I don't know what what to do today. Like I have no idea. My m I'm completely blank. Then I go there and oh, that's a good idea. And then I then I build something from that. Nice. Um, so it, so it's essentially like a backlog. Is it like a, is there like a formalized way of dealing with feedback? Like when you see feedback and you think it's good, does it go into a system or an issue tracker, or do you just go and make it? Yeah, no, there's no system. No. 
No. So no, there's no system. No. There's no system. You no. just deal with it. Yeah. It's surprising <laughs> how often in the games industry the answer is we just deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know that until two years ago, we never did use any version control at Flambeer? Wow. Because JW didn't understand, my colleague didn't understand how to use it. <laughs> so he would just upload a file to the folder and then I would, I would like figure out how to put it on a repository. And then two years ago, I finally figured out how to do it. Like now when he boots up GameMaker, it automatically like ah. pulls and then when he closes it, it pushes again. Okay. And then I found out that he never shuts down Game Maker. <laughs> <laughs> he just leaves it up. He just turns off his computer and goes to bed. Those are <laughs> the challenges of dealing with formalized systems. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? One more, unless it's really fast. Uh, just yell. Yeah, as a developer and designer, and uh, as a player, what are your most inspiring or favorite games? So as a developer, a designer, and a player, what are your favorite or most inspiring games? Um, hmm. Right now. <laughs> Let's say right now instead of ever. Because ever. OK, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this is a kind of what I like. Uh, like a dodging the questions, but as sure. a developer, you should always look at Blizzard, like, like Blizzard, all, all, yeah. all of their games. Like, uh, it's uh, they are excellent designers mm. and really know what they're doing. Um, for me personally, I I really like a, a game by uh, Terry Cavanaugh. I'm not yep. sure how to pronounce it. They uh, called Don't Look Back. It's mm. a small, small uh, game. Uh, it, it really, I mean, I, I, thought, I, I thought that was amazing. It's like, a very clever game because yeah. it's based on the Greek myth of yeah. the guy who goes to the underworld to save his girlfriend or wife, his wife, wife, I guess. Yeah. Um, but he gets told not to look back. Exactly. Right? And Terry turned that into a, a game, game mechanic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a really good game. Yeah. Uh, Terry Kavanaugh's Don't Look Back, which. I guess like you you are a fan of like the small interesting experimental games as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, but I I kind of lost touch with uh, with that scene. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really like the like Jason, uh, you know, tall Jason. Jason Roar. Roar. Yeah. <laughs> One of the few people I have to look like this way. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, that was fast. So yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna overrule whatever the organization says. One more question. <laughs> One more. And please don't tell me there is no more question because this is really awkward. Like, s somebody have a question, please. There's, there's one more question, but he already asked the question. If there's nobody else, we're going to take that question. There's somebody else. This feels like an just, auction. Yeah, just like going once, going twice, just that shout, person. Shout. Oh. Has there ever been a time where you looked at a mod and you said, we should do that? Hmm. <laughs> or is there a big <laughs> folder where you just put mods in, you print them out and you... Well, obviously the Pistons was a, was a mod. Uh, that was just amazing. And we got that added to the game. There was some, uh, some drama regarding that as well, because there were actually two people making, making the Pistons mod. But uh, uh, yeah, that, we, that was uh, like a... We needed to have that. Uh, otherwise, I, I honestly I, I try to avoid looking at mods, and the reason for that is because uh, I don't uh, partly because I don't want to feel like I'm stealing, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, because I sometimes when I have an idea I search for a mod with, or based on that idea, and if I find a mod then I don't do it, and and that is because. Uh, I don't want to compete with the models either. Like I want them to have the have their own uh, like uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> in uh, habitat to to be uh, creative. Uh, but of course, if I think a feature is something that everybody should have, and not only the ones who play with mods, then I'm gonna add it anyway. Um, but yeah. Re regarding regarding modding as well, I mentioned that a little bit earlier that they want over often over specializes on a certain thing. Uh, I I really like how uh, how they took the whole 
like the factory mod and made Factorio out of it. Because Factorio is a, is a, is a really, really great game. Um, so, it, like, you can, you can take, like, inspirations and, and create new stuff for, from whatever, yeah, really. Go. Good. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.